Welcome to all prospective A-level Spanish students. Narrowing down your A-level subject choices and deciding on a sixth form is undoubtedly really difficult, alongside managing your GCSEs and not to mention during a pandemic. But the other Spanish academic prefects and I will hopefully give you a taste of what A-level Spanish is like by going through why you should choose it, why we enjoy it, what the course and lessons are like, the jump from GCSE to A-level, and top tips from our experience and also building upon alumni's experiences. More specifically, we will show you what makes studying Spanish at A-level at Newstead stand out from anywhere else and why we really recommend it. Firstly, why choose Spanish A-level and in particular, why Newstead? So choosing Spanish means you're not limiting your options as it's such a versatile and multidisciplinary subject that goes hand in hand with so many others such as politics, history, art or English Lit. The huge breadth that the A-level course covers means that you can make loads of connections across whatever combination of A-level subjects you choose. For example, you could compare the politics of immigration between the UK and Spain, or look in depth at Hispanic politics, like the stance of the far-right party Vox in Spain, or for history, the past dictatorships of Latin America. And also looking into current affairs of today helps us give a more nuanced answer to a problem, for example. In one of our AS units on cultural heritage, for those interested in art, we look into Frida Kahlo and Diego Velázquez's Las Meninas, to name a few, and studying La Casa de Bernardo Alba by Lorca for our literature and writing essays on it means we get to apply the skills from our English GCSE to Spanish in terms of structure. But thankfully, the essays are much shorter, so it's not actually something to worry about, even if it may initially seem daunting to write an essay entirely in Spanish. Studying Bonberda by Pedro Almodovar as our film study also gives us insight into how film techniques and the difference between La Mancha and Madrid demonstrate the historical context and get to understand the royal cinema and Spanish life and culture and its influences, whilst also learning about things like La Marida Madrileña. Spanish opens up a lot of doors later on as it's just so applicable. Being able to speak a foreign language is an undoubtable asset for business, for communication and trade deals, and nearest future for all of us, maybe in any later degree or apprenticeships that we choose to pursue. Because we approach scenarios with more innovation, given the cultural understanding having studied Spanish at A-level gives us. Often new alumni choose to take Spanish as part of a joint honours degree, like Isabella, now a third year at Cambridge University studying history and Spanish, and some people in my class, we have applied to take Spanish and economics, Spanish and English Lit, and myself, Spanish and French. Moreover, thanks to Spanish, perhaps best of all, you get to watch, or at least try to, Netflix series without subtitles, so this could be Cable Girls or Grand Hotel, and Spanish music becomes so much more accessible and enjoyable. It also improves your confidence and makes you better at explaining concepts, as we are compelled to rephrase our thoughts with more clarity in translating our ideas into Spanish, which therefore allows for better communication. Above all, studying Spanish means you gain a fresh perspective and have access to the Hispanic world, understanding traditions, the society, the history and the politics in a much more nuanced manner than just from a restrictive English point of view. It also makes travelling much easier, when we finally can at least, and there's a lot of satisfaction gained from being able to order a meal in Spanish, go to a concert and understand everything, or buy tickets, as the A-level course teaches such useful and practical Spanish for day-to-day -day things, as well as more heavy issues of immigration and gender equality. Choosing Spanish also helps you understand English as a language and its grammar better, so for those interested in linguistics, it's quite ideal, as the skill of translation means you realise the differences between syntax, the application of tenses, and also how to manipulate language to sound more natural. And above all, what makes Spanish at Newstead stand out is the constant input we get into the way lessons are taught. Our teachers, so Ms Montero, Mr Moran and Mrs Ballister, they ask us if the pace of lessons are alright, if we would like to revise a certain unit in a bit more depth, or a certain grammar point, like the subjunctive, or if our workload is too heavy at the moment with other subjects too. They're always happy to adjust the homework for Spanish so we don't get too stressed. And it's this approachable and open environment, both among the students and also with the teachers, applicable regardless of the subject you choose to take, which makes Spanish especially all the more enjoyable. This also applies to our half an hour weekly Spanish speaking sessions too. We are lucky to have a Spanish language assistant, Maribel, who always makes sure to ask us from our very first session and from the start of each one, what areas you want to focus on in the long term and individually in each session and reflect on at the end how we think each session went and what future targets we'd like to set ourselves. Practicing speaking regularly with a native speaker enhances our fluency and how natural our Spanish sounds, getting to learn idiomatic expressions along the way, such as, es pan comido, it's a piece of cake. Newstead's approach, which gives room for such cultural exploration, going far beyond a textbook-based teaching style is a definite highlight. 
Our teachers introduce us to other resources to use to supplement our knowledge of Spanish and Hispanic culture or for revision as well, whether that's websites or recommending short stories and films associated with the topics we study, or just whatever we mention that we're really interested in. For example, I enjoy Latin American magical realism, and my teachers quickly recommend me films like Como Agua para Chocolate, as well as short stories by Borges. Engaging beyond the syllabus in this way and encouraging us to engage with Spanish current affairs for better cultural understanding means Spanish at Newstead is without doubt my favourite subject. And now, some Newstead alumni will discuss their experiences of Spanish and how Spanish remains relevant in their university studies and courses today. Hi, I'm Maha. I'm currently studying economics at UCL and I took maths, Spanish and economics as my three A-levels. So I thoroughly enjoyed doing Spanish in both year 12 and year 13. Not only do you get to develop your language skills to quite a high level, but you also get to learn about the culture, politics and history of Spain and Latin America. Um, you also get the opportunity to learn how to analyse Spanish literature and Spanish film, which was a really interesting aspect of the course. Um, having done Spanish A-level, I had the opportunity to choose an additional Spanish module here at uni at quite a high level in business and current affairs, and I have been loving it so far. Um, also, my course has a year abroad in it, so hopefully in my third year, I'm looking to study in a Spanish-speaking country, which should be really fun. Um, not only do I think you should choose Spanish A-level, I also think you should definitely choose it at Newstead. The Newstead Language Department supports you in every aspect of learning a language, whether that's in improving your writing skills, your listening skills, you get to have sessions with an oral assistant to help improve your fluency, which I think is so important when learning a modern foreign language. Um, I also think uni and just the world itself is such a diverse and multicultural place that it's so good to know how to speak a language like Spanish, which is so widely spoken, because you can communicate with and relate to such a wide variety to your people. Um, Spanish can help you socially, it can help you academically, but also it's such an employable skill to have, so I'd really recommend doing it at A-level. Hi, my name's Charlotte. I study maths at Durham University. Um, I took Spanish A-level last year. My subjects were maths, further maths, physics and Spanish. Um, Spanish was a great subject. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I really liked learning about the culture of Spain. I thought it was quite, it's quite a topical subject learning because you keep up to date with the, the news and everything that's happening in the world um i also didn't i didn't think that i would enjoy the literature aspect of it but actually i thought la casa de bernardo alba which was the book that we studied was actually a really great book so i that was also really fun and i liked the oral speaking stuff because it was it was fun to like debate and discuss your ideas in spanish um i think spanish is a great subject to take it's really useful this year i'm actually I've, I can pick one module, so I've picked one non math module, I've picked Spanish, because I'm hoping to do a year abroad maybe in South America um, in the third year. So, so yeah, I think Spanish was a really great subject to choose, even though it's quite different from my other subject, I still really enjoyed it and it's also a really useful skill to have. A lot of employers love seeing people that can speak multiple languages and it opens so many doors for you in the future. So I would definitely recommend taking Spanish at Newstead. My favourite thing about studying Spanish at A-level is that the units are a lot more interesting and relevant than the ones at GCSE. For example, there's units on immigration, cohabitation, monarchies and dictatorships in Spain and Latin America, which are all a lot more interesting and politically engaging than the units that you cover at GCSE. Also in class, you learn a lot of vocabulary that is both relevant to your course specifically and the units that you're studying and that could be also used practically if you were abroad for example. Uh, in Spanish in year 12 you'll have four lessons a week and in year 13 you have five lessons a week and these will be split between your two teachers. Uh, as well as your normal lesson time you have a 30 minute speaking slot every week with the speaking assistant. This will usually be during your free or a study or something like that and you will usually do a card that is relevant to the unit you've been studying in class. Uh, regarding the course, there are three papers for the actual A-level exams. The first paper is much like what you will have done in GCSE, so it's just covering the 12 units that you will have studied during the two years, so it's got reading, listening, translation, all that kind of stuff. The second paper is writing, so that's an essay on the book you study in year 13 and the film that you study in year 12. And the questions are quite similar to English lit questions. So like, how is this theme presented? How is this character presented in the book or the film? Um, the third paper is the oral questions and the oral paper 
um there will be a photo card which is very similar to the one that you would have done at GCSE and there's also something called the individual research project the IRP which is essentially where you pick a question that is relevant to the Spanish speaking world and you you make a presentation about this question it has to be something that you're interested in because you do have to talk about it and um the thing is this book this topic can't overlap too much with uh any of the topics you studied in class so you couldn't just take the name of a chapter in the textbook and do that as your presentation like it can be some overlap but it can't just be a straight transplanting of the information on the topic and if you want to do a book or a film it can't be the book or the film that you've studied in class uh, this IRP, you have to make a presentation of two to three minutes and then you have to discuss it with your examiner for nine to ten minutes. Uh, and this makes up 35 percent, 35 marks even of uh, the oral exam. And now the jump from GCSE to A-level. So initially the jump from GCSE and A-level seems deceptively huge. But as you go through the course and settle in, it's definitely not something to worry about and the workload is very manageable. Lisa takes into account that each of us have had different QC, GCSE teaching approaches, depending on our schools, and also because of corona. And in this way, this personalised approach and understanding of us, and this ensuring that we will have a similar starting point and foundation to build upon through focusing on revising grammar, specifically at the start of the year, and if necessary, giving us extra individual support in any areas we're weak on. We will feel much more confident, and also we don't have to fear or panic about being at a disadvantage, as everything always gets revisited. This regular revision, which occurs throughout both year 12 and year 13, makes us really confident in them and easily find links across the tenses, which makes learning them much easier. Moreover, while in GCSE your class may have been bigger, at say 30 to 1, at A level the class size is so much smaller, you get much more individual one to one support, almost like university style seminars, that have been a great way to prepare for university style study too. These small groups also help us feel much more at ease and comfortable to ask when we are stuck especially with our teachers so willing to take the time, even outside of class, to go through anything we're stuck on, whether it's essay plans or grammar or whatever we're interested in. Spanish doesn't just stop in the classroom or as a lesson we have to go to. It goes far beyond it, to our interests and to helping us. This is further supported by our weekly half an hour one-to-one -one sessions with Maribel. While at GCSE, we may have had these shared and these shorter Spanish-speaking sessions. At A-level, these happen individually to really strengthen our speaking skills, both practising the cards, which are part of our A-level exam, or, but also to focus on our pronunciation and cultural knowledge too. It's no longer just learning Spanish was the aim of passing the exam, but appreciating it as a language and also the Hispanic culture. And as for speaking work, while in GCSE for the speaking exam, I know I did at least, many of us may have just learnt scripted answers. At A-level, you're encouraged to make notes and expand on these, having a far less dictated approach. Instead, it's much more free and natural, once again contributing to our fluency and enjoyment. In terms of the jump from GCSE to A-level Spanish, there's a lot more content at A-level. So we learn about the history and the culture of Spain in a lot more depth than at GCSE, but this simply just makes it a lot more interesting to study. We also study a film and a play at A-level. So we did the film in year 12 as part of the AS course, and then we're about to start studying the play now in year 13. Um, I wouldn't say that these are aspects of the course to be intimidated by at all just because you haven't done them at GCSE. We spend a lot of time going through how to write the essays and they're really interesting and I would say that studying the film was one of my favourite aspects of the AS course. And now for some top tips. There's a common misconception that the workload at A-level is huge and hard to manage but this is not true. For example, with essays, by planning them immediately or just jotting brief notes soon after you've gone over them in the lesson, this makes the process when you actually start writing it much quicker and easier and less stressful, and thus it takes you less time as you've already got some ideas. Like with regular revision of past content and grammar, I recommend lounges online for content and also vocabulary, doing the subsequent homework or exercises from the book or writing essays becomes so much easier, as it's just applying what you know to different situations. And for listening practice, I really recommend a website called Lyrics Training. It's free and it's a proactive way of engaging with Hispanic music. You choose whatever Spanish song you like and type it out the different parts of song lyrics as they play, helping you practice both your listening and your writing, especially distinguishing between tenses and also finding your favourite Spanish singer. 
For podcasts, Duolingo has some great podcasts with a mix of Spanish and English about the culture and the language. And for reading, I recommend the Penguin Parallel Text, which offer you side-by-side reading of Spanish and English for popular st- stories by a range of authors, give you a good starting point to then explore further into what you enjoyed the most. All this extra exploration helps form a key foundation of our speaking exams, based off our broader knowledge of topics, being fact files for each unit, so we know lots of statistics and facts to back up our opinions. As for some tips, I'd say keep up the regular um, vocab and grammar revision, as this will be invaluable in all three papers at A-level. Also, watching films or Spanish series um, can massively improve your listening and also your fluency in your speaking exam. Also, reading extra texts or the news in Spanish, anything you can do to immerse yourself in the language will be super helpful at A-level. So thank you and I hope you take up Spanish next year.